In this lecture, we are going to talk about the step-by-step -step implementation of simplex algorithm for linear optimization. So first, uh, let's take a look at the generic form of this problem. It's minimizing C sub B transpose X sub B plus C sub D transpose X sub D. Our variables are X sub B and X sub D subject to the constraint, which is B matrix B multiplied by X sub B plus matrix D multiplied by X sub D is equal to B, which is the right hand side vector. And our variables are supposed to be positive. Then uh, we talked about the standard form for Tableau. So basically Tableau is uh, showing an overview of your problem in a matrix form. So we can use it for the iterative updates until we can find the optimal solution. So first at the left side, uh, we have matrix A and we have zeros. We have B inverse multiplied by D and then we have the relative cost vector below that. We have B inverse B. And at the end, we have the minus value of uh, objective function evaluated at the current solution. So as you can see, the first column at the left is the basis variables. The middle one is the non-basis variables. We have relative cost vector and we have minus f of x. All right, now uh, we want to see how we can develop an step-by-step -step implementation so that we can use simplex algorithm and we can program it, right? So because the ultimate goal is how we can program simplex algorithm when it comes to, uh, when it comes to large scale problems. In the very first step, uh, we have to find a feasible set of solutions. So the feasible uh, base point uh, and you know, the update rule that we have to do that, it's uh, we use Tableau we, and based on the initial update, we update the Tableau accordingly based on the initial generated set of solutions. Something which is very important here is number of uh, constraints that you have in a linear programming problem is equal to uh, the number of base variables. So uh, number of constraints is somehow like a hint for us. So we can determine the number of base variables. So if we have two constraints and five variables, then two of our variables are going to be, let's say x1 and x sub two are going to be our base variables. And what was the definition of base variable? Base variables cannot be zero. So they are definitely non-zero. And then we have three variables, which are definitely zero. So given this, what we can determine is our X sub base and X uh, non-base uh, ve vectors. So X sub base is X1 and X2 in this case, and X non-base or non-basis variables are X sub three, X sub four, and X sub five. So the first step was to determine a feasible base point and update the Tableau accordingly. In the next step, we have to determine which of the non-basis columns is going to enter the base and which of the base columns is going to enter the non-basis. Let's see what does that mean. That means we have to choose column J in the non-basis variables that has the most negative relative cost vector. So if you can write down the tableau on a piece of paper and follow these steps, you will see what is the relative cost vector. Relative cost vectors are the coefficients for the non-basis column in our tableau. Here is uh, the relative cost vector variables. So in the relative cost vectors, you have to choose the most negative value. So if you have minus two, minus three, and five, then you're going to use minus three. If you have minus one, minus six, and minus eight, then you're going to choose minus eight, the most negative value. 
And then based on that value, you know which column you want to choose that enters the basis uh, column. So we want to switch one of the bases with one of the non-bases. So now uh, we have to choose which of the base uh, variables is going to enter the non-basis variable columns, right? So we, we have to choose one of the rows because each row in the basis, in the basis columns only has one number one, the rest of them are zeros because that's identity matrix. So we choose the row, let's say row I with the smallest positive ratio of the corresponding entry. So what does that mean? Again, let's go back to the tableau. So we want to choose row I with the smallest positive ratio of the corresponding entry in the base vector and coefficient T sub IJ. So T sub IJs are the coefficients of the chosen X sub D or the column in XJ. So going back to Tableau, we already know which columns we want to use. Now we look at B inverse B, like capital B inverse B, and we divide them by the values in the column that we have chosen. By this, we somehow normalize the values of the right-hand side coefficient by dividing them uh, by x dy. So let's say just in this example, column G values are one, two, and minus four. And the right-hand side, what we have is B inverse B, which are six and eight. So we divide them by the corresponding value in that column. So six divided by one is one, eight divided by two is four. And now we choose the smallest positive value which in this case is number four. So now we know what's the value of our J, which column, we want to choose column J, and this is the row that is going to help us to determine which of the base variables is going to leave the, the, base, the set of base variables. So now we are going to follow this row I to see which of the base variables is leaving. In this case, for example, is the column that I'm showing here. In the next step, I'm going to switch this base on non-base columns. So that's the next step in the simplex algorithm. So in step four, what we do, we execute the base change as following. So T sub KL is equal to T sub KL minus T sub IL multiplied by T sub KJ divided by T sub IJ for the scenarios where K is not equal to I and L is not equal to J. So, and T sub IL is equal to T sub IL divided by T sub IJ and T sub LJ is equal to minus T sub LJ divided by T sub ij. And T sub ij is equal to one divided by T sub ij. So uh, if we do this, what we are going to do, basically we are going to create a column similar to the basis column in the non-basis variables. And then we switch these two columns to make sure that the non-basis variable moves to the base and the base variable leaves the base and goes to the non-base. So now we look at the relative cost vector. If all coefficients in the relative cost vector are positive, then we have achieved the optimal point for this problem. What does that mean? That means our solution cannot be further optimized, cannot be further improved. If not, then we go back to uh, step number two, where we want to start with this new solution and update our tableau. So we keep updating the tableau until we reach convergence. So that's why we call it an iterative algorithm because it starts with step one, two, three, four, five. 
And if it doesn't converge from step five, it goes to step two until we reach convergence for this problem. All right, now that we have these steps, I'm going to talk about some of the special scenarios that you may face that your optimization problem is not given in the standard format that we talked about so far. So this is the uh, format that we have seen, minimizing C transpose X subject to A multiplied by X is equal to B and X variables are all positive. So now we want to see what will happen for the scenarios that we have inequality constraints. How can we transform inequality constraints to equality constraints? Before we talked about the case where uh, A11X1 plus A12X2 is less than or equal to B sub one. In this scenario, we just add a slight variable, which is a positive variable to make sure that this can transform to an equality constraint because it's less than or equal. So if we add a constant positive value like x sub three, it's going to turn into positive. But now the question is, what if this is greater than or equal, like the scenario that we have here? What if we have a11 x1 plus a2 x sub two is greater than or equal to b1? In this case, we are going to deduct the value of x3. We are going to subtract the value of x3 from a11 x1 plus a12 x2 to make sure that this uh, inequality constraint is transformed into equality. At the right side, actually, it should be b sub 1, not 0. All right, yeah, so it's going to be a11 x1 plus a12 x2 minus x3 is equal to b sub 1. Another special scenario that we may face is minimizing C1 transpose X1 plus C2 transpose X2 subject to A11 X1 plus A2 X2 is equal to B. X1 is positive, but X2 is unlimited. So far, we were dealing with cases where X2, uh, both of them were uh, positive variables. What if one of them is unlimited? So it could be either negative or positive. How can we transform an unlimited variable into limited variable where we have you know, the positive values for them rather than X2 could be either positive, negative, or zero? How can we deal with this uh, issue? So uh, the idea is uh, we can replace that unlimited variable uh, with two other variables. So we basically, uh, choose, let's say, x to upper bound and x to lower bound, where both of them are limited variables, but then when we subtract them from each other, they are going to give us x2. So we replace x sub 2 with x sub 2 upper limit minus x sub 2 lower limit. Where x to L and x to uh, uh, upper limit u are both positive variables. So that helps us to transform that unlimited variable to a limited variable. Let's rewrite it. Minimizing C1 transpose X1 plus C2 transpose X2 with variables X, where X here is X1 and X2, subject to A1 X1 plus A2 X2 is equal to B. X1 is positive, but X2 is unlimited. As we mentioned, we are going to replace x2 with x2 upper bound minus x2 lower, where both x2 u and x2 l are positive variables. So let's rewrite the problem. We are going to have minimizing c1 transpose x1 plus c2 transpose x2 upper bound minus c2 transpose x2 lower bound. Our variables now, we have more variables. We have x1, we have x2, u, and we have x2, l, subject to a1, x1, plus a2, x2, u, minus x2, l, is equal to b, x1 positive, x2, u positive, and x2, l positive. So as you can see, we could get rid of the, the unlimited variables 
and change them into the format which is desirable for us for uh, creating the tableau and solving this uh, linear programming problem. All right. Uh, now, uh, what I want you to do is to write down this example and try to transform it into the standard format before uh, watching the rest of this video. So the example is minimizing x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, the objective function 2x1 plus 3x2 plus x3 subject to x1 plus 2 multiplied by x sub 2 is equal to 4, x1 minus x sub 2 is less than or equal to 2, x2 plus 2x3 is greater than or equal to 1, x1 is positive, x2 is positive, and x3 is in unlimited. So as you can see, it has all of the different special cases that we discussed. It has equality constraint, inequality less than or equal, inequality greater, greater than or equal, and unlimited variables. Now, pause the video here and try to write this in the standard format of minimizing C transpose X as uh, subject to AX is equal to B. And I changed the, uh, the problem actually to maximization, so it has all of the different scenarios that we discussed. All right, pause the video here, do it uh, for yourself, and then check the answer with this solution. So, uh, the first step is uh, we multiply the objective function by min minus one. It helps us to change the maximization problem into the minimization problem. For x1 and x2, we keep them as they are uh, because they are both limited variables. Uh, as you can see, x3 doesn't appear in the first constraint. Uh, so in the second constraint, uh, we are going to add x4, which is our slack variable, to transform it to equality constraint. In the third constraint, we are going to subtract x5, which is a positive variable, to transform that constraint into the equality constraint. And for x3, which is an unlimited variable, what we are going to do, we define x3l and x3u, which are both positive values. All right, so we have one more step, which is replacing all of the x3s in the new optimization problem to make sure that all of the variables are positive. So we have x3 is still unlimited. In the next step, what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace the value of x3 with x3 u minus x3 l. Right? So this way, we also get rid of x3 and change it to the standard format. So our objective, x1 and x2 are going to be the same. x3 is going to be replaced with x3u minus x3l. Subject to, our variables are also increased. We have x1, x2, x3l, x3u, and x4 and x5. Note that x4 and x5 are the slack variables, or the variables that we use to transform the two inequality constraints into equality constraints. So, the reason that I'm writing the variables that don't appear in some constraint with zero coefficient is to help us to write the tableau in a more convenient way. So the first constraint is x1 plus 2x2 plus 0, x3u plus 0, x3l plus 0, x4 plus 0, x5 is equal to 4. The second constraint, again, x3 doesn't appear, so it doesn't change. The third constraint, 0 x1, because x1 doesn't appear. x3, this time, I replace x3 with x3u minus x3l. So it's going to be plus 2x3u minus 2x3l. We don't have x4, so it's going to be 0x4. And for x5, minus x5 is equal to 1. And for variables now, all of our variables are in the desired way. All of them are positive. So there is a constraint that, in, that may, ensures that all of the variables should be positive. So this is the standard formula that we were looking for. And now we have the optimization problem in the standard form. 
Uh, in the next step, uh, we want to show this in the matrix and vector format. Why do we do that? Because we can leverage this for creating the tablet. So let's make some space here. So we start, we start from uh, the coefficients that we have in the objective function. So if you recall, we show them by vector C. So vector C is going to be the coefficient for all of the variables in the objective function, even if it's zero. So minus two for x1, minus three for x3, uh, minus one for x3u, plus one for x3l, zero and zero. So because x4 and x5, it's like variables don't appear in the objective function. The next one is matrix A, which is a matrix of all of the coefficients in the constraints, right? So for the first one, only x1 and x2 appear. So 1, 2, 0, 0, all of them are 0. The second one, x1, x2, and x4 appear. So the coefficients for other are 0. The third constraint, we have 0, 1, 1 2, minus 2, 0, and minus 1. So this is the matrix of coefficients uh, for all of the constraints. So this is the aggregated one. So that shows AX is equal to B. And what's B? B is the right-hand side vector. So for the first one is four, second one, two, and third one, one. So this is uh, the vector representation that can help us to create uh, the tableau. So in this lecture, uh, we talked about how to uh, create Tableau, how to create a standard format, and then the step-by-step -step implementation of simplex algorithm. But the step-by-step -step implementation can help you for programming a linear optimization problem in a more in a more consistent way because now you just need to follow these steps in your program. Uh, we talked about some special cases that we haven't talked before, like AX is greater than or equal to B. In this case, we just uh, deduct, uh, deduct this variable XS uh, to make sure it's equal to B. So we transform the greater than or equal to equality. We also talked about how to replace an unlimited variable with two other variables, which are both positive. 